So in respect to the ed plan, I think that there's a couple of things that stand out for me. One is the emphasis on uh, core competencies. So at the end of the day, we want our kids to be good thinkers, communicators, and personally and socially uh, competent. And this curriculum really shifts from looking at uh, a knowledge base and a content base to really looking at developing those competencies. So um, it, given our global world and the changing face of, of our society and how uh, we have access to facts and knowledge like we've never had before, it makes a whole lot more sense to be focused on the, the really important things that we want kids to attain by the time they leave our system. And so if you look at any of the curriculum, they're all built from uh, that creative thinking, critical thinking, the communication perspective. Uh, and again, I think that there's Probably that personal and social uh, competence area is really important because uh, that's really uh, necessary if kids are going to be uh, learners. So they have to have a good positive personal identity and they have to be able to self-regulate themselves and they have to have some self-awareness and, and of course we want them to be socially responsible so that, that piece is, is absolutely key too. Uh, and I think that for teachers in the classroom, it gives them some flexibility, mm -hmm. gives them um, the uh, opportunity to shape that curriculum mm -hmm. according to the context of their community and the needs of their kids. So uh, if you're teaching in Atlin Lake, it looks very different than if you're teaching in Surrey, BC. And right. so you can now take that curriculum and you can really shape it uh, and connect it to your community mm -hmm. and to the needs of your kids. Uh, and that is just it, building in that relevance and that meaning, meaningful experiences for kids is, is really absolutely critical. So as someone working as a professor in a graduate program designed, a certificate program designed to help teachers with the new BCA plan, what are the kinds of things that you want to do in that program to help the teachers? Um, I think one of the things that uh, is important is that the curriculum is described in its components. So we talk about core competencies, we talk about the curricular competencies, we talk about big ideas, we talk about content. Uh, one of the first things that I think a teacher has to do is make sense of that back together. So what does that look like in a classroom when I teach from big ideas? Uh, what part does the content play? So if I'm not teaching for knowledge anymore, I'm teaching for the application of knowledge, what does that look like? So I think putting all of those pieces together so that it, it makes sense uh, and so that I call it sometimes you have to reconstruct the curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's being deconstructed so we understand the parts mm -hmm. and now we have to reconstruct it so that it actually makes sense for the learner and it makes sense uh, in terms of how you plan your experiences for kids and, and so you have a sense of where you're going and how you're going to get there. So I think that that's mm -hmm. one of the critical pieces. I think really understanding the core competencies. So, you know, what, what what are the ways that we help kids become better thinkers and communicators? And what are the, the things that need to, the conditions that need to be present in a classroom? Uh, and so I think, you know, delving deeper into that uh, mm -hmm. is key. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think ultimately, you know, we start to look at things like, uh, what does the learning look like in this kind of classroom? So it's about reconceptualizing the classroom, mm -hmm. looking at learning differently. Uh, we need to see kids much more engaged. Uh, anytime they have those opportunities to have the hands-on materials, uh, explore concepts, uh, and figure things out for themselves, they deepen their understandings, mm -hmm. um, which is really important. And then I think teachers need to start thinking also of assessment differently. So if right. we conceptualize our classroom differently and we're focused on different things, then we need to think about what does assessment look like. So right. it's no longer a system where I teach, I teach, I test, and I collect marks. And, uh, and it's a system that now suggests to teachers that you have to be really actively assessing on an ongoing basis, moment to moment. You have to be making observations, listening for misconceptions through your questioning, addressing those misconceptions through further learning experiences, giving kids descriptive feedback, and continuing that loop right till the point where you collect uh, enough evidence to have a profile of the learner. So we talk about the, the profile, who is this learner? 
what are their strengths, what are their learning goals, and how do we support them in getting there, which is a very different notion than teach, test, collect, marks, and grade. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think, you know, supporting teachers and learning some of the ways of, a, of approaching assessment uh, will be really mm -hmm. important because that's always a place that teachers are anxious. This curriculum really starts to uh, allow teachers to approach the curriculum uh, in a way that engages students. So, you know, I read some recent research that said 60% of our students are not engaged in school. Mm -hmm. And that meaning that some of them may be doing very well, but they come home from school to do the things they're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And we need a system that really uh, helps to foster those kids' pa passions within the school day and within the curriculum. Really allows kids to, to stretch their thinking and, uh, and develop some uh, interests and passions that they may not have mm -hmm. had an opportunity to uh, be engaged with. So I think that, you know, there's, uh, there's that strong base of why we're doing what mm -hmm. we're doing uh, around the BC Ed Plan. Uh, there's the opportunity for teachers to really shape that curriculum for the needs of their kids. It also lends itself really well to creating a classroom where there's always multiple entries for kids. Mm -hmm. So the kinds of uh, activities and learning experiences that kids are engaged in, um, all kids can come and be a part of that. So sort of the notions of, you know, I teach to the whole and then I adapt or modify for kids at the, e at the edges um, really isn't as applicable anymore. I design learning experiences so that all of the kids have some place that they can enter and then I work with where they are in terms of their strengths uh, and their areas for development. So it makes a far more inclusive classroom and, uh, and a place that really fosters kids' self-esteem. Uh, all of our research tells us that uh, kids have to construct their understandings and their knowledge and, uh, and that that um, traditional didactic way of teaching really doesn't help yeah. students develop the competencies. Right. So uh, we have to sort of let go of some of that control perhaps. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that goes back into the hands of students and we mm -hmm. build that student ownership and that student voice and that student responsibility mm -hmm. um, and accountability so that at the end of the day, when they do leave our school system, our universities and our business and our and our work world says, you're sending us the kinds right. of students yeah. that um, are really able to do the things that we ask them to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you.